distinguished guests, fellow members of the institution, uh, family, friends, ladies and gentlemen, my sincerest thanks to all of you uh, here present and to our almost 24,000 uh, members of Engineers Ireland for conferring this great honour on me as President of the Institution of Engineers of Ireland. Our institution was founded in 1835 and we predate almost all other professional engineering institutions worldwide. I've done some calculations in the President's room based on the listing of my predecessors there and I'm uh, proud and honoured to say that I've just become the 125th President of this institution. And I'm deeply grateful, uh, honoured and excited to take on this role uh, for the coming year. First, I want to say I've been privileged uh, to work with our immediate past president, Dermot Byrne, for the last two years. Dermot has committed a huge amount of his time, uh, his valuable time and his invaluable experience to sustaining and improving Engineers Ireland across a wide range of topics. His background, as uh, he pointed out, uh, was extremely influential uh, in helping us to produce an excellent State of Ireland report last year that concentrated uh, on the energy sector for the first time. He's leveraged his previous experiences as CEO of uh, Airgrid uh, to help Engineers Ireland, uh, particularly, I, I, I think, in the areas of governance and of strategy development. Uh, Dermot, uh, as Vice President, initiated and led an external review of a fit-for-purpose fit review of the institution and its structures and processes, and he subs this subsequently led to the creation uh, under uh, Dermot's leadership of a new audit and risk committee which complements the existing scope covered by the finance committee. Uh, um, we've already heard about the strategic plan that has been developed but I think uh, Dermot must take great credit for again the leadership role that was uh, there in putting forward that strategic plan for the 2017 to 20 uh, period. The plan as Caroline showed you in the, in the slides there defines a new vision, um, mission, values and goals for the institution as, long, as well as detailed uh, uh, breakdown of how as an institution, as members and as the Secretariat will go about trying to achieve those goals over the next three years. From my own point of view, Dermot has been a very easy person to work with. He's always good humoured, he's always good company. But at the same time, I think he has a steely focus in achieving, looking to achieve the desired outcomes for Engineers Ireland and for the profession generally. So Dermot, you leave a very strong, lasting legacy of improvement uh, in this institution and we are all very grateful for that. Thank you. I've also worked very closely over the past two years with Bill Grimson and Bill has now reached the end of his four-year term as an officer of Engineers Ireland. He's smirking at me already, so, uh, <laughs> and the this, this smile has become uh, wider and wider as we've approached this time. Uh, I can share with you that he has uh, taken great delight and mischievous pleasure indeed in giving me an exact countdown to the AGM day every time we meet, starting at last year's AGM. So we, we've now reached ground zero, uh, <laughs> Bill. I know all of you who have been in contact and close contact with Bill appreciate his wisdom and his thoughtfulness, his kindness and consideration of others, and of course his, his wicked sense of humour. So Bill, on behalf of Engineers Ireland, I want to thank you for the lifetime, lifelong commitment and loyalty that you have given this organisation. I'm sure that you and J Jane will continue to help us out over a, a diverse range of topics and we really, really appreciate all that you have done for this institution and the profession of engineering. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> so happily for me, uh, Peter is going to continue uh, as vice president here. Peter has been a stalwart of Engineers Ireland for many years, particularly in the northern region, organized a hugely successful conference in Belfast. From my point of view, uh, Peter is a great source of wisdom and, and insight, as well as being a great friend and companion. So I really look forward to working with you, Peter. And equally well, I'm delighted both personally and on behalf of the member body, uh, Marguerite, to welcome you in as Vice President of Engineers Ireland. I've worked, as, as, as we both know, we've worked together in council and executive over the past few years. You bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to bear from your career your entire career, but most particularly as CEO of ESB Network. So again, I'm really looking forward to working with you. I'm looking forward to working with all of my 
fellow officers Dermot as immediate past president, Peter and Marguerite. As many of you, as you know, and, and uh, Dermot has said, Marguerite comes from the kingdom in Kerry. So uh, I have a very strong allegiance to Mayo. Uh, Dermot is from Dublin. Peter is from Tyrone. So we have a very strong GAA lineup uh, across the four. I'm going to do my level best to make sure that Mayo comes out on top for once. Um, so the first order of business will be to change the Engineers Ireland hashtag to Mayo for Sam, Sam for Mayo 2017. <laughs> Nearly 69, in 1969, nearly 50 years ago, John Fogarty of Credence Clearwater Revival wrote a classic anti-Vietnam anthem, Fortunate Son. It ain't me, it ain't me, I ain't no senator's son. It ain't me, it ain't me, I ain't no fortunate one. Well, I ain't no senator's son, although Senator Frank Feehan is a first cousin of mine. That's as close <laughs> as, I can, as I can get. But I am definitely a fortunate son and definitely a fortunate one. At all stages in my life, I've been lucky and blessed to be surrounded by positive influences, by kind, loving, supportive people who help me to move up and to move forward. So as, as Jimmy Rabbit says in The Commitments, who are your influences? So my, my father, Oliver Feehan, who we've heard before, was a huge influence on me. Um, <clears throat> he was a civil engineer, a local authority engineer, a county engineer in Carlow and a person who throughout his life was hugely committed to the power of engineering to help people, to help communities, to improve lives. I'm really pleased that there are a number of his engineering colleagues here tonight, Liam Fitzgerald, um, Seamus O'Connor, Mairead Phelan. Uh, I've got very nice messages of support from others in Carlow County Council, and it's really nice to see that continuity. Uh, my dad was president of the institution in 1984-85, and I'm very pleased and fortunate to say that we are the second, only the second father-son combination in the long, long history of this institution. Uh, Patrick Raftery was president uh, of the institution in the 1944-45 term, which was exactly 40 years before my dad. And his son, also Patrick Raftery, was president of the institution for the 1967-68 term, exactly 50 years before my term. So a nice piece of historical uh, symmetry, uh, which I think is appropriate in engineering. My mother Maureen, who you've just briefly uh, met there, uh, was a Moonshore Scholar, a national teacher. Both of her parents were national teachers. Her brother and her sister were national teachers. A lot of her in-laws are national teachers. My two sisters are primary teachers, Maureen and Anne. And I have many cousins that are also both uh, teachers at either primary or third level. Indeed, my wife Ashling is a professor of Transport Economics in University College Dublin. So I've, I'm surrounded by teachers, mainly female, and have been uh, all of my life. And delighted to say that teaching and education uh, side has, has been a huge influence on me. And following on the fortunate one theme, I was fortunate to be educated by the De La Salle brothers in Castlebar and by the Christian brothers in Carlow. And going to those schools based in provincial towns, you're exposed to a great social mix from all backgrounds. And in, bo in, in both of those schools led by the religious brothers, a huge emphasis on how important it is to improve your life, through to improve your lot through education. I was very fortunate to have the same uh, teacher for four years, uh, from third class to sixth class in Castlebar, Brother Pius Gerard, a, a man way before his time. Uh, we learned in the classroom through the folk revolution, li listening to Bob Dylan, Simon and Garfunkel, <laughs> Creedence Clearwater Revival, um, Woody Guthrie, all the songs of justice and freedom and songs of rebellion, always with a huge emphasis on social justice and equality. And that, both in terms of an interest in music and an interest in social justice and equality, has stayed with me. I studied civil engineering in University College Galway from 79 to 83. And the professor of civil engineering there was, was on toll of uh, Jaglan O'Keeve, uh, Declan O'Keeve. And uh, he had a great, <coughs> strong belief that the technical content of the four years was actually relatively unimportant. What was most important was learning to approach problems as a good engineer would, defining the problem critically, defining the range of possible options or solutions, and then finding the best, the most economic or the most efficient or the most practical solution from that range. And as I get older and go through life, I think that 
belief that that's what an engineer should do and that's what the education of an engineer should be about, I think is a very strong uh, one. I was also fortunate to work and study in the United States uh, for a number of years. I worked with a fantastic professor at uh, Purdue University, uh, Kumara Sinha, who was an immigrant from India. Donald Trump, take note, what a <laughs> brilliant contribution the immigrants of the United States have made to that country. And in the same way, I think we will have, and we see already, what a great uh, influence and impact immigrants who come to this country can have. Professor Sinha had a razor, had, has, he's a fantastic guy, razor sharp intellect, and the recipient of very many awards and honors in the United States and, and further afield. But what really impressed and stuck with me over and above his intellect was the work rate, the hard work that he put in with that intellect, recruiting and pushing through graduates from all over the world, chasing successfully large research grants to fund that, discussing, debating research topics, and all the time trying to raise the profile of Purdue, Purdue University, which is my American uh, alma mater, and also the profile of engineering through his work and through the work uh, of his students. While I was at Purdue, uh, technically I was registered in Purdue, which is in Indiana, but most of the time uh, I was actually in Champaign, Illinois, uh, working with the construction engineering laboratory of the Corps, US Army Corps of Engineers. I really enjoyed my five years plus in the Midwest in the 1980s. Very, for those of you who haven't been to the States, such friendly, hospitable people, but at the same time in a country that, has, that had and still does have a great just do it attitude. Really positive energy, great uh, drive to support entrepreneurs, and that was something that I had not been exposed to in Ireland of, of the time, of the 1980s. And I'm so pleased to see how that has changed completely in the last 25 or 30 years, and particularly in the last 10 to 15 years. The willingness of people and of engineers to back themselves, to believe in themselves, is so much stronger in our engineering companies and in our young engineers, and that's a, a great thing as far as I'm concerned. We can see this clearly in the IT and software space, but more generally, I think, in the commercial semi-state bodies that are going out all over the world, our civil engineering and other engineering contractors, our consulting engineering companies, our manufacturing companies, and so on. You know, we are really outward focused as a country and as an engineering profession within that country, and it's a great thing to see. I also, while I'm talking about the States, want to acknowledge my friend and col colleague, uh, Katie Zimmerman. Katie's a highly respected leader and teacher in the pavement management and transportation asset management areas, which are the areas that I have worked in. Katie and I started working over 30 years ago uh, in the Corps of Engineers, and fair play to her, she joined Engineers Ireland earlier this year so that she could officially come to the AGM tonight, flew in from Chicago at the beginning of the week, and, uh, and is attending here and will fly out again tomorrow. So Katie, you know, from my point of view, you make such good friends and you meet such nice people in your career in engineering, and I really appreciate the effort that you've put in, so thank you. So they're my influences, insofar as I can give you influences, in terms of what I'm looking forward to doing in the, in the coming year. First of all, uh, again, coming back to the strategic plan, I think it's a great plan. I think it's a great roadmap of where we're going. And I'm fully committed, and I, and I know Peter and Margarita are as well. We have a three-year time span to try and implement the, the goals, the main goals and, uh, and uh, uh, aims in that and, and we have a roadmap to do it, I will give my all in terms of energy and so on to driving uh, that strategic plan because I think it, it forms a great basis for the institution going forward. As part of that and as members of Engineers Ireland, obviously we're engineers and engineering technologists and so on, but I think we are so lucky to have a really dedicated and hardworking staff here who are mainly non-engineers but are completely dedicated to raising the profile, to making this institution, our membership, our, bo our membership body, the best that it possibly can be, both for us, the members, and also for the citizens of Ireland who gain so much from what this institution does. 
I look forward to working closely with Caroline as Director General, with Damien, Michelle, John, Dee, Carissa, and Lisa in the uh, Executive Directorate, and indeed all of the staff in Engineers Ireland, to deliver on the outcomes and to measure the impacts of the implementation of the strategic plan and to do all of the initiatives uh, that, that Caroline so clearly outlined. Looking forward to launching the 2017 State of Ireland report in June of this year, uh, in, as Michelle keeps reminding me, in a couple of weeks. Um, so this year we're concentrating on two areas, the areas of transportation and communications. Uh, last year, as I say, we looked at the energy sector. I've chaired the steering committee of the State of Ireland report for the past two years since we moved to uh, having a, a focus on particular areas rather than commenting on the full range of areas. I've seen the final proofs of the 2017 uh, report. I'm extremely impressed with how it looks and with the quality and the breadth of the work that has been carried out in the two areas. We have over 40 named expert members of the institution who've been working on the report for the past six months. And I think as the energy report did, it's going to form a great springboard for helping us to raise the profile and to try and influence the direction that this country is going. We'll continue to set out the case for increased investment in critical infrastructure, both in the maintenance and improvement of our existing uh, assets, infrastructure assets, and also getting the badly needed new capital investment that's required to deal with the bottlenecks in this country and to push forward uh, and, and underpin the future economic development of the country. We'll also continue to press the case for a National Infrastructure Commission to develop and support the case for cross-departmental large-scale capital projects and to support the goals and development of the new national planning framework. I think the national planning framework, the Ireland 2040 plan, is going to be a hugely important document in laying out the framework for future development and investment uh, in this country. As uh, Dermot has said, I'm representing Engineers Ireland on the advisory group uh, of that, uh, the Ireland 2040 plan, and I uh, will continue to do so uh, through the coming year because it really is of, of, of high importance both to the institution and to the uh, country generally. I've spoken about the influence of teachers, particularly primary school teachers, uh, and its influence on me. I am really proud of Engineers Ireland and the outreach that we have uh, to young people through our many in initiatives, as Caroline has shown, particularly in the STEPS <coughs> initiative and in our Engineers Week. Um, and I will work diligently to support that outreach and to try and help us to increase that. It's so important for that communication, I think. This year, or in the past year, we've commenced a new outreach to the third level um, academic institutions, led first of all by Dennis McGrath and uh, more recently by Lisa from our membership team. From my own experiences in the US, I've seen firsthand how active and continued engagement by the professional engineering institutions with the engineering student body and with the engineering faculty can create a, and does create a win-win situation. We need to nurture and encourage our connections with the students so that Engineers Ireland becomes the natural home for all of our engineering graduates, a home when they leave college and a home that we hope they will stay with throughout their professional career. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing that roll out, expand over the coming year. Uh, I'd like to um, acknowledge and congratulate John Power, our former Director General, um, who succeeded PJ Rudden in the centre here, uh, again a former president, as president of the UCD Engineering Graduates Association. And the EGA, in my view, is critically important in helping our outreach uh, to the academic institutions, in particular the engineering <coughs> faculty in UCD. It's an organisation and a structure that I think I would love to see replicated in other key universities and institutes of technology. I look forward to working closely with the new president of the Irish Academy of Engineering, Brendan Toohey. In Dermot's year as president, we started uh, new discussions with the IAE. I'm confident that, that together we can clearly define how our two organizations can best work together. We have different functions, but in, in many areas, those functions overlap. And I think it's very important and I'm very confident that we can map out uh, how we go forward together. We had, uh, for example, separate but complementary submissions on the National Planning Framework, uh, which I think was a very good example of how we can work together, and I wish to particularly acknowledge our former President Peter Langford, uh, who's here this evening, uh, for his continuing efforts in that area. 
And while I'm acknowledging former presidents, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Pat Lynch, who was the president immediately before my dad. Pat has been an absolute stalwart of this organization and indeed of the Irish Academy of Engineering. I'm really pleased to see you here uh, again, Pat, uh, and thanks for coming. I'll also, when I'm talking about John Power, John has also been of great in help to our institution in helping us reach out to the IRFU in support of the Rugby World Cup 2023 bid. We've pledged the support of Engineers Ireland both to the bid and to the many facets of organisation and preparation that inevitably uh, will be required in the six-year run-up to the World Cup. I'm assuming, of course, that we're going to win the bid, but we are. As an All-Ireland Engineering organisation with strong regional committees in all parts of the island, I think it, we're in a really good position to help uh, prepare Ireland for that massive sporting, cultural and economic uh, occasion that we all hope will, will come in 2023. Of course, there will be challenges to our infrastructure, to our logistical capabilities across the whole spectrum uh, of engineering, but we are engineers. We have to embrace that challenge, get stuck in and help to deliver it. So the bid documents uh, have to be delivered by tomorrow, uh, the 1st of June, with the recommended uh, bidder uh, in October of this year and a final vote in November of this year. So. Uh, on behalf of Engineers Ireland, I'd like to wish the very best of luck to Dick Spring, who's chairing uh, the bid, uh, Kevin Potts, who's leading it from the IRFU, and the whole bid committee, and here's hoping that uh, when we come back this time next year, we'll be talking about how we're going to get ready for the Rugby World Cup in 2023. I could speak uh, for about a lot of other things I'd like to see done, but I'm not going to. I'm sure you'll be uh, delighted to hear. So in closing, I'd first of all like to thank um, my wife, uh, Ashling, and my three children, Brian, Kira, and Owen, for their love and pride in me, <coughs> and for their tolerance in allowing me to commit so much of my spare time to Engineers Ireland. It's very much appreciated. I'd like to thank my family, my other family uh, here tonight, my mother, Maureen, my two sisters, Maureen and Anne, and my brother, Aidan, uh, who can't be uh, here, for a lifetime of love and support. I really appreciate that. I have to acknowledge the support and, uh, of my work colleagues and friends in PMS, uh, particularly my fellow directors, uh, Owen, Brian and Owen, all chartered engineers and all who have uh, committed, uh, whether they realise it or not, but I think they have, to taking on a much bigger burden over the course of this year to free up some space for me to try and do what I would like to do as president of the institution. And of course, I'd like to thank all of my friends and colleagues in Engineers Ireland particularly in the Civil Division and the Roads and Transportation Society, where we have laboured together uh, for many years. I'd like to thank them for their company and their friendship and support. As I said earlier, I really like being an engineer. I think you meet so many nice, sound, <coughs> dedicated people, and it's a, it's a great profession to be in. So I'm really looking forward in closing, uh, Dermot and Caroline, and to you all. I'm really looking forward to working closely with the staff here in Clyde Road, working closely with council and executive, with the regions and divisions, the societies and committees of Engineers Ireland to sustain and improve on the goals and aspirations of this great institution of ours. Thank you again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the privilege of being your president for the 2017-2018 term.